yeah, so yeah, let's come to the uh, outline directly. So first, I will briefly introduce the background about uh, protein structure prediction based on sequences and also uh, protein content map prediction, which is uh, reduced the representation of protein structure. And next, I will introduce the concept of coevolution and the recent progress in this, in this field. A deep learning based method that using the feature of coherence between two positions of the uh, multiple students alignment data. After that, the inverse of the convergence matrix uh, precision matrix will be introduced, which also can be uh, interacted as the Gaussian appro approximation of the post model. And the based on the precision matrix and high accuracy protein content map predictor, RESPRI can be obtained by coupling the precision matrix with the deep net. And uh, uh, an extension of RESPRI and some applications that are built on it will also be uh, briefly introduced. Finally, we will have a sub summary of the RESPRI method. So let's first have some background about the protein structure prediction. So the purpose of protein structure prediction is to infer the three-dimensional structure from its uh, amino acid sequence. So the task is uh, actually more and more emergency because uh, there is a wider gap between the sequence and the determined structures. So actually determining the protein structure is usually quite expensive. It should be more than like uh, $250,000 per sequence. But for a protein sequence, it is actually around uh, $100. Because of that, the accumulation of sequence is uh, certainly faster than the protein structures. So actually in 2010, the gap is around 200 times, but now it's over 1,000 times. So sequence-based uh, protein structure prediction should be help uh, to narrow the gap between the sequence and the structures. So to summary, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the input of the protein structure prediction is the sequence and the output of the method or the algorithm is a protein structure. And uh, each atom is represented by the coordinates in three dimensional space, uh, just like this in a, a PDB format. It's like this in a PDB, PDB format. So actually this setup is actually hard to formulate, especially for a general machine learning methods. But the geometric descriptions between atoms for example, the distance should be easier to predict because they are uh, rotational and translational invariants. So for the simplification, we just predict a binary contact map and the protein can be represented as a graph. Usually the, the link between two residues is defined if the distance of their C beta atoms is less than a threshold, for example, at Armstrong. So although the contact map is a, a uh, reduce the representation of the structure, we can still have some overview of the protein structure. So <clears throat> for example, uh, we can uh, some observe some secondary structure patterns uh, in the contact map. Uh, the, the patterns in the blue box here uh, represent the helix in the protein structure. And uh, those points that are vertical to the diagonal corresponding to the interactions between uh, the anti parallel beta sheet and the protein. Uh, and another application of content map or predict content map is to help recovery the three dimensional coordinates by some uh, contact potentials during the simulation of the protein structure prediction. So the potentials uh, look like this, uh, can help put two atoms close to each other if they are predicted as contact. So uh, how to predict the contact map? Of course, you can simply using the amino acid type or other features to directly predict the map. This is fine, but a more powerful uh, alternative is using uh, coevolution for contact map prediction. 
So the assumption of coevolution is that uh, amino acids at a different positions do not evolve independently, actually. So most single-site mutations are deleterious. And uh, the damage done by the first mutation uh, should be repaired by the mutations in the neighboring sites. And uh, this is uh, the direction from the contact to the uh, evaluation. However, from the uh, multiple sequence alignment to the contacts, uh, how do we uh, get the direction from the observations to the contact? So we can simply measure the correlations between the columns in the the columns in the multiple sequence alignment. And uh, such correlations should help reduce the contact the structures. So for example, the uh, basic covariance between two variables. And uh, here we want to introduce the work by David Jones that predicted the contact using the basic covariance between the two columns. In this work, the covariance between two positions, for example, I and two positions I and J uh, is represented by a 21 by uh, 21 matrix because each variable that representing a position is categorical. So the categorical variable can be uh, expanded into 21 sub variables. Here 21 means the 20 types of amino acids or residues plus an extra state for the gap uh, that may occur in, a, in one position in a multiple sequence alignment. So for each pair, uh, we can have uh, 21 times 21 descriptors. And uh, the, uh, the problem can be formulated into a, like a pixel labeling or pixel classification problem in like computer vision. The channel size of the input is like 441, which is 21 times 21. And the, uh, they used a full, fully convolutional linear networks uh, structure here to predict the content map. So this, I believe, uh, actually is an intuitive, intuitive formulation. So it makes sense. And uh, actually, it work pretty well. However, the convergence just simply uh, measures some kind of marginal dependency between these two variables without considering other positions of variables uh, in a multiple sequence alignment. So next, I'm going to introduce a global uh, model because the convergence is just can be considered as a local model. That uh, in, in the global model, the coupling parameters uh, between variables is called post model. So uh, we can, so here, post model is a probabilistic model, and uh, each row of the uh, multiple sequence alignment can be considered as one observation. And of the variable, because and the, the post model have two terms. The first term uh, is the pairwise complex, and the second term is the local fields uh, representing like two body and the one body interactions. And the later, some other methods also consider three body terms in the Hamiltonian. But actually, in this case, we just simply ignore that. We believe that these two, two, two terms should be enough uh, in this field. And here, Z is the normalization factor to ensure that the summation of uh, probability for all, all possible observations equals to one. And uh, it contains uh, uh, many terms like this. And uh, such large amount of terms is almost impossible to compute. So there are many uh, approximations. And uh, this paper introduce a uh, Gaussian approximation to solve uh, this problem. And, uh, the, uh, and uh, finally, they find that the solution is just the negative of inverse of convergence matrix, uh, just like this. So uh, which is also known as precision matrix here. And uh, in this work, uh, we consider estimation uh, regularized precision matrix because in some cases where only just a few alignments found in the multiple series alignment. So the inverse of the convergence 
uh, should be like an error post. So we add a regularization term to try to reduce the number of parameters. So I think uh, the most famous one is the graphic lasso, which applies the error one regularization to the precision matrix. And you can see that the first terms here are the negative log likelihood function of multivariant Gaussian distribution. And this term uh, is the uh, lasso term or the L1 regularization term. Uh, in this work, we find that uh, rich precision estimation have the best performance uh, like this. And we also tried other types, for example, uh, L1, uh, L0 regularization and also group graphic lasso. So before I show the uh, performance comparison between those uh, uh, precision matrix estimation, uh, the evaluation, our, our first have a brief introduction of the evaluation index have been used in this area. So the predicted content map is evaluated by top n precision at multiple ranges. Usually n have four values like this, and L here is the protein length, indicating that the precision uh, at the different threshold levels. And the content map can be actually split, split into several ranges. For example, the sequence separation uh, for shorter range contact is uh, from six to 11 in this area. And uh, for medium range, it is from 12 to 23. And if the sequence separation of contacts is over 24, then they are considered as long range contacts. So actually the long range contacts has more, uh, it is more important and uh, determines uh, the overall topology structure. So it is uh, mostly used. And now we show the performance of different kinds of precision matrix estimation. Uh, the contact is directly uh, predicted from the precision matrix here. Uh, the preci precision matrix had the shape of 21 times error by 21 times error. And uh, each sub matrix with the shape of 21 by 21 uh, uh, can be uh, used by a post process, which is a norm of the sub matrix. And the norm can be considered as the predicted content map. And uh, yeah, so the long range top end precision shows actually uh, that the rich precision matrix have a better performance for such dataset. And here, L1 and the Sykov have the same loss function, but different implementation. And Sykov is implemented in graphic lasso, and the L1 is implemented by uh, ourselves with uh, ADM, ADM uh, strategy or optimization protocol. So, uh, and also the rich precision matrix estimation has a closed form solution. So it can be very fast. Uh, uh, we only need an eigen decomposition during the computation. So uh, we have uh, finally determined the feature extraction uh, strategy and we can show that to the pipeline of our proposed RISPRI based on the precision matrix. So actually the big, uh, biggest difference between RISPRI and uh, the previous, previous work, DeepCoff, is that a matrix inversion is added here. And we also uh, replace the previous uh, convolutional uh, neural networks uh, with ResNet as a backbone structure of ResPre, just like this. And uh, first, uh, the comparison between the convergence feature and the precision matrix feature is shown here and here. Solid, solid lines are the validation precision during the training epochs, and the dashed lines are for the convergence feature. And we can observe uh, actually a significant gap uh, between two lines. And the p-values p -values are shown in the left table. Actually, the improvements is brought by the precision matrix is quite 
obvious and uh, significant. So we can have the conclusion that the performance can be uh, boosted up by simply uh, apply a matrix inversion operation. And here we show the performance of risk free compared with other state of other state of the art methods. Now, risk free is also uh, proven to be comparable with state of the art method in CASP 12. And here, CCM Parade and uh, Sykov here are uh, unsupervised models. They just directly infer the contacts from the multiple, multiple sequence alignment without the supervised training. So it is reasonable that they have a relatively lower precision. And here, deep cough uh, is the method based on the convergence matrix, but uh, slightly worse, uh, have a slightly worse compared with other state of the art methods. But if we just uh, using the inverse of the convergence matrix feature, the precision matrix feature, we can have uh, uh, the recipe can achieve a higher precision than other methods with just one feature itself. So uh, here we also show two examples to show the predictive power of risk pre The first one, when we have three aligned sequence in a multiple sequence alignment, which means uh, only three samples was used to estimate the precision matrix. And uh, there are 200 variables in the system, which means the parameter size is 200 times 21 by 200 times, 10, times 21. And I believe that the precision matrix should be uh, just near random. And we can see that the direct prediction using precision matrix uh, produce zero two positives among top 40 predictions. And, uh, but risk pre can still have a top air verified precision of 50%, which is far better than other methods. And uh, this uh, example highlight the power of a supervised model in the the ResNet structure that is used by Respri. The second example, we can see that uh, the re result of Respri have uh, more like uh, even distribution across a sequence. And the diverse contact should help recovery a better protein structure model. Uh, actually, Respri has already been successfully applied in many tasks uh, especially some structure prediction methods in uh, CASP, CASP 13. And here, CASP stands for uh, critical assessment of protein structure prediction. And it's, it is held every two years. The structure is blind to everyone when they do the prediction or the modeling. So the ex experimental groups were trying to solve the structure and at the same time, and the performance of the computational servers or groups will be evaluated after the server structure is released. So there are many um, tasks or categories in the uh, CASP competition. For example, the protein structure topology prediction in the form of uh, atomic coordinates. And uh, the quantum map prediction is also one of the official tasks of CASP. And the estimation of model accuracies uh, tries to assign a predicted quality score to those predicted structures or models from uh, the server groups. So uh, RESPRI uh, did not directly uh, participate in CAS 13, but those methods using RESPRI or extending RESPRI participate in the protein topology prediction. And uh, the, the first task and also the residue residue uh, contact prediction task. Hey, Yan, sorry, this is uh, Marcy real quickly. There's a question that was put into the chat box. I can read it to you if you'd like. It's um, for benchmarking data sets, were these limited to proteins with known structures like case study protein? And are there predictions related to contacts mediated by disordered regions of proteins that wouldn't be captured by most structural experimental approaches? Uh. Uh, I'm sorry, but I, I need to check that. Yeah, do you want me to, can you see the chat or do you want me to read it to you again? 
I don't, I don't know whether I can take that. I can read it to you again if you want. It's sort of two parts. The first part is for benchmarking data sets. Were these limited to proteins with known structures like case study protein? Yeah, of course they have known structures, but during the prediction, we do not know the structure. We only have the sequence or the multiple sequence alignment. Okay, and then the second part is, and are there predictions related to contacts mediated by disordered regions of proteins that wouldn't be captured by most structural experimental approaches? Uh, uh, but we, uh, actually that is possible because the disorder uh, regions, they have like uh, very different patterns and uh, there could be some noise for the prediction, but we did not systematically evaluate the specific time. Great, thank you. That's everything in the chat right now. And uh, they said, great, thanks. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. So this is uh, uh, the, uh, the pipeline of Dawn Lab servers in CASP-13. And the Raspberry provides some contact information for protein structure prediction or simulation programs like CITS or CQuark in CAP13 as shown in the, in the left finger. And the right finger shows the ranking of the prediction structure, uh, of uh, protein structure prediction track in CAP13. So where the first cause is the error fault in the John group that uh, used the RISPRI also had a quite good ranking in this competition. Another work, which is an extension of RISPRI, also called RISPRI, participate in the official content map track in CASP-13. It, uh, uh, it is called RISPRI-S because it assembles three core evolution NLS features. The first two are the precision matrix feature and the convergence matrix feature that has been, uh, have been mentioned before. And the third one is called uh, the CDU likelihood maximized of port model. It is actually another approximation of port model similar to the precision matrix. And uh, this uh, approximation is uh, that it's representing the pro probability of the sequence uh, by the product of individual positional probabilities. So in, in, in such case, the partition function for each position only have like 21 terms. And uh, it is very easy to compute 21 terms in the partition function in the, the PRM matrix, uh, the PRM approximation can be considered as uh, a set of uh, uh, multinomial logistic regression tasks. And uh, uh, each of those features will go through uh, ResNet and then concatenate it together uh, and then feed it to another ResNet of like, and each of the ResNet has like 24 Reserve blocks. And finally, we, we can have the content map uh, or the contact probability map as a final result. Uh, so actually, RISPRS uh, did a quite good job in the content map prediction track and uh, it ranked as uh, first in this track. But however, Everfold didn't participate in this task. So uh, next, uh, I went to briefly compare our pipeline, our true rest pipeline with FFO pipeline. So uh, the basic formula is actually quite similar. Uh, the formula is just coupling the co-evolutionary features with ResNet. And the, the main difference is that in true rest, we have like three co-evolutionary features, but in FFO, they only consider one PRM feature that also used being by uh, triple res as a main feature and then feed it to the ResNet of FFOLD. Uh, and also we have a pipeline to generate more multiple sequence alignments from a uh, metagenome databases. And uh, of course that work is mainly done by Chen Zhang in the region. So, uh, but the, the advantage of Everfold, I believe, is that they have uh, extremely deep learning 
or deep neural networks with like 220 residue blocks, but uh, we only have like uh, 48 residue blocks from the beginning to the prediction. And another thing is that they have a training set with uh, 35,000 proteins. But at that time, we did not realize the, the importance of data. And we only have like 7,000 training protein sequences. And after the competition, we simply retrain our model with more data. And we find that our model should be comparable with AlphaFold, actually. The different part of AlphaFold. And here, I list several- Question. question. Yeah, please. Yeah, so that was CASP 13. Yes. How many, how many proteins did they use in CASP 14? Do we uh, know? In CASP 14, we have like uh, 25,000. And AlphaFold too? AlphaFold has like 200,000. Yeah. 10, 10 times in our. Yes, okay. Yeah, Thank but you. yeah. And we believe that the data is very important. So we want to uh, examine that. Thank you. Yeah. And here I list several tools uh, that use contaminant predicted by RESPRI. And here, LOMITS and the C-Threader are the threading programs by uh, Dr. Weijun and using uh, content map alignments to find the long distance structure templates. CITESER and c -Quark uses RESPRI to predict the contacts as uh, extra restraints or energy potentials to guide the protein folding simulations. The last one, FA Parade, is using content map to split sequence into different structure domains by considering the uh, protein as a graph and the, the contact are the links between nodes. Yeah, of course, this work is also done by way. And you can, uh, of course, check those servers at the John Lab webpage. But for RESPRI, we also have an online server where you need, to, well, what we need to do is pass your query sequence in the text box here and then press the submit button. And after several hours, depending on the condition of our uh, computational clusters, you can uh, have the prediction results look like this so that you can have a quick overview of the protein structure. For example, uh, this map show here can be, should be a, a helix, F helix protein with some uh, anti-directional folds at the C terminal. And uh, here we have a <clears throat> brief summary of RISPRI. The first one is that the inverse of covariance matrix in this problem should have a better performance uh, than the covariance matrix itself. And the second one is that the rich regularization should be a better choice. So actually the covariance matrix and the, its invers inversion should have to contain the same amount of information uh, when they are used as features of deep learning. Uh, actually, uh, in practical, there are many limitations of the current system. Uh, for example, the limitations of available training data, the re representation power of uh, deep neural networks. So uh, the precision matrix compared to convergence matrix should help the neural network to recognize those contact patterns in an easier and more efficient way. But if we have uh, enough data, we may not need such, uh, I would say, inductive knowledge, uh, just like the, the matrix invention of, uh, the, the invention operation of convergence matrix. But I believe that the current data size cannot uh, help the deep neural networks to figure it out. So some pure information should be added to the system, just like the, the, the precision matrix. Uh, you may also see some problems with the current pipeline for protein structure prediction. So the, the first <clears throat> is that the neural network and the protein folding is not connected. So errors uh, during the folding cannot pass back to the neural network and uh, update the parameters of neural networks. And uh, another problem is that the loss uh, function is marginal actually. So multi, uh, multiple ranges of contacts, they share the same weight, but uh, 
the contribution of them to the structure should be very, di very different. So I think uh, one possible solution to this problem is finding, figure out an uh, uh, end-to-end structure of uh, protein structure prediction, and which I think the FFOLD, the most recent version of FFOLD uh, should be uh, one of those solution. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Chen Xinjiang and Wei for their very high quality multiple sense alignments, which is the basement of the method. Uh, and other lab members, Eric, Xiaobian Zhou, and uh, of course, Professor Yang Zhang for the very uh, example discussion and the formula, and also some very interesting ideas. And uh, I would like to give my uh, special thanks to uh, Hua Jiechen and uh, Rong Xiaomi for their help to understand the concept of post model and some uh, inverse problems. And uh, other uh, materials that are used in the slides are also listed here. And uh, I think uh, uh, that's it. Thank you. So any questions? Uh, all right. I think that that's uh, the that are the all the introductions today, and uh, thank you for coming.